Operations at Hong Kong Airport returns to normal after problems caused by tech outage. The observatory will issue the number one warning signal later tonight. At least 11 people are killed after a bridge collapsed in China's Shanxi province. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Hong Kong and the rest of the world are recovering from the tech outage caused by a faulty Microsoft Windows system update. The problem was caused by an update from U.S. cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike. The Hong Kong Airport Authority said check and services for airlines affected by outage have returned to normal. Though airport operations have resumed to full operational capacity, 20 Hong Kong Express flights were earlier cancelled. Six flights between Hong Kong, Kaohsiung and Taichung tomorrow will increase seating to facilitate affected travellers. Timothy Lee has our top story. In the early hours of this morning, Hong Kong Express staff could still be seen conducting manual check-ins at the airport. Passengers were prioritised according to the gate entry time. Long queues of tourists remain a common sight throughout the morning. Some passengers who arrived at the airport earlier complained about the airline's delay in handling the check-in process. <laughs> Tempers were charged after airline staff prevented a passenger from entering the check-in counter area. The passenger complained that he already arrived three hours earlier to complete the procedure. <laughs> Hong Kong Express was among the hardest-hit airlines in the global Microsoft outage incident. Several tourists voiced frustration at their delayed flights. This tourist from Ningbo in China said her flight was delayed by more than 10 hours. She was disappointed after the airline failed to make any alternative arrangements. A Phuket-bound tourist was met with similar treatment after his flight was delayed by 11 hours. Um, I got the hotel nearby. I was hoping, uh, but no, they did not uh, help anything at all. How do you feel? Yeah, upset, but what can I do? But not all were displeased with the airline's arrangement. This woman traveling to Seoul said she only had to wait for around an hour and that the process was acceptable. Technical problems facing Hong Kong Express were somewhat relieved when its self-service check-in kiosks resumed operations at around 6 this morning. The airline noted that all services returned to normal at around 8 a.m. Among the 24 Hong Kong Express flights originally cancelled owing to the incident, four were restored, including flights travelling between the city and Da Nang in Vietnam and Taichung. Chief Secretary for Administration Eric Chan said authorities are deeply concerned about the Microsoft outage, but emphasized government and airport computers were not affected. Chan added the government is already communicating with Microsoft and urged the tech company to resolve the problem promptly. Timothy Lee, TVB News. And the world is still regaining its footing from Friday's Microsoft Windows outage that caused havoc across airports, hospitals and businesses in many countries. This as most major infrastructure used the Microsoft Windows operating system. Nasri Karim has more. The dreaded blue screen at San Francisco International Airport. Long queues also at airports in Mexico, Thailand, Italy, the United States and elsewhere around the world. Airports, hospitals and businesses hit by Friday's Microsoft outage are still scrambling to resume normal service. Thousands of flights across the globe were cancelled after the Microsoft Windows operating system used by major infrastructure crashed because of a faulty update from U.S. cybersecurity company CrowdStrike. The Austin, Texas-based company has apologized for the problem and says it is in the process of fixing it. And while life is gradually returning to normal for many, CrowdStrike says a full recovery may take some time because it involves manually deleting corrupted files. We've got all of these critical systems. We've got obviously hospitals, airlines, banks. I've heard that there's emergency services involved and there's going to be more and more. All of these systems need manual interaction to fix them. We're properly talking millions of computers looking at the scale of the outbreak. This is going to take some time to fix. Some hospitals in the U.S. have had to cancel non-urgent surgery and the outage caused chaos with the patient appointments. 
Okay, so I am located in California, Orange County. Um, we're currently in the middle of this Microsoft outage. Computers are black. We have the screen of death. Hello, a very good morning. You're watching... Broadcasters were also affected. The global outage has raised concerns about a digitized world, depending on just a few providers to function. We used to have a lot of small companies making different tools. Some were good, some were bad, all doing roughly the same thing, and people would use those. But they've been gradually picked up and acquired and consolidated down. So now we've got a very small number of companies who are producing almost everything. While CrowdStrike said the problem was not caused by a cyber attack, experts warned that hackers may take advantage of the floor to target organizations. Nazri Karim, TVB News. The Hong Kong Observatory says it will issue the standby signal number one at 10.40 tonight. The forecasters said the tropical depression over the central part of the South China Sea still has a relatively loose structure. According to the present forecast track, the system will adopt a more northwesterly direction and move towards the area around Hainan Island and intensify gradually. The observatory predicts there will be squally showers and thunderstorms over the next two days. Hong Kong, Guangzhou and Macau will co-host the 15th National Games next year. The Hong Kong government plans to recruit 10,000 volunteers for the event. Helen Chen reports. In November next year, Hong Kong, Guangzhou and Macau will collaborate and jointly host the National Games. Speaking at the launching ceremony of the volunteer program for the Games this morning, Chief Secretary for Administration Eric Chen said it is not realistic for athletes to queue up and cross the borders to compete like normal travelers, which is why better arrangements such as prior registrations need to be made. He added that discussions with mainland authorities will be held soon. He said construction work on the Kai Tech Sports Park will also be completed before the National Games. He added tests are being run on the park, especially in terms of crowd control and actual use of the venue. As preparations are underway for the co-host cities, a large number of volunteers will also be needed. The volunteer program calls on the public to implement sportsmanship and the volunteering spirit and participate in volunteer work for the Games. Chen said there will be multiple volunteering roles for Hong Kongers, including but not limited to receiving guests and athletes, media center support, and sports and venue support. Anyone of age 18 and above can apply to become a volunteer, be it as an individual or as a member of a group. The application period commences today and ends on September 20th. Helen Chen, TVB News. Hong Kong has many old buildings, but it is sometimes a challenge to redevelop them because it requires bringing enough landlords together to agree on a rebuilding project. Recently, the compulsory sale application threshold for old buildings in Hong Kong was lowered, which makes it easier for aged buildings and older neighborhoods to be redeveloped. But concerns remain over the interest of minority owners. Secretary for Development Bernadette Lin said support centers will be set up for these minority owners. To expedite redevelopment work of old and run-down buildings, the government has amended the law to relax the compulsory sale application threshold. For private buildings aged 50 or above, the required minimum proportion of owners agreeing to the sale will be reduced from 80 percent to as low as 65 percent. Secretary for Development Bernadette Lin said today there are about 6,000 such aged buildings. After the relaxation of the threshold to 80 percent from 90 percent a few years ago, the number of compulsory sale applications jumped fourfold. She said the relaxation of the threshold involves the redevelopment of private properties, so the government will not take the lead in the relocation and resettlement of affected minority owners. But a support center will be set up next month to provide assistance to them, including property valuation services. Meanwhile, the Town Planning Board has approved the draft zoning plans for the Santin Technopole, Maipo, Fairview Gardens and Ngao Tame. The government has been asked to undertake wetland conservation efforts. The development secretary said such efforts will be covered in the land deeds. She also expects the leveling work of the first batch of land to be completed in 2026. Lin said the development of the 3,000 hectare northern metropolis, which covers the Santin Technopole, is set to span more than a decade. In China, at least 11 people have been killed and dozens more are missing after a highway bridge collapsed during a flash flood in Jiangshui County of Shanxi Province. 
President Xi Jinping expressed great concern and ordered an all-out rescue effort. Footage showed the disconnected bridge deck and multiple rescue vehicles arriving at the scene. The accident occurred at around 4 a.m. on the highway from Jiaxue County to Shanyan County. Parts of the highway bridge collapsed and multiple vehicles fell into the river. As of 10 a.m. this morning, relevant departments have found five vehicles and confirmed at least 11 dead. According to a preliminary estimation, 20 vehicles and more than 30 people are still missing. The Ministry of Emergency Management has already dispatched a team to guide on-site rescue. And still ahead, International Court of Justice rules Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories as illegal. Donald Trump talks to Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky. Welcome back. Israel's latest attacks on Gaza's refugee camp has resulted in more Palestinian deaths. It, come, it comes hours after the International Court of Justice, in a landmark opinion, said Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories is against international law. David Garrett reports. Many brought to the hospital in central Gaza were already corpses. They could not be saved. Health officials say seven of the dead were killed in an airstrike on the Nusirat refugee camp. The desperate scenes outside the emergency department have been an almost daily occurrence since October. As morning broke, funerals were held for at least a dozen. More were expected, including those of three children. A baby was saved from his mother, who died before reaching hospital. The boy, now stable in an incubator, was saved by doctors just in time. He has not yet been given a name. His father is injured, but survived. The latest lethal Israeli strikes came after the International Court of Justice says Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories is against international law. The vote of the judges concluded Israel should stop settlement activity in the West Bank and East Jerusalem and should end its illegal occupation of parts of Gaza. By 11 votes to 4, is of the opinion that the State of Israel is under an obligation to bring an end to, sorry, to bring to an end its unlawful presence in the occupied Palestinian territory as rapidly as possible. By 14 votes to one, is of the opinion that the State of Israel has the obligation to make reparation for the damage caused to all uh, natural or legal persons concerned in the occupied Palestinian territory. The court's decision is not legally binding, but Palestinian leaders called the unlawful opinion a watershed moment and believe it can put pressure on Israel's backers. No money, no arms, no trade, no nothing. No actions of any kind of support Israel's illegal to support Israel's illegal occupation. All UN member states are obliged by law to end Israel's presence on the territory of Palestine that is what inter international law requires, no more, no less. The Israeli Prime Minister called the ICJ's decision lies. It increases already intense pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu, who was seen with troops in Gaza this week. Israel is also being criticised by a United Nations humanitarian group that says airstrikes must end. The High Commissioner for Human Rights stresses once again that the violence must end. There must be a ceasefire and the hostages must be released. Reconstruction of Gaza must begin. And the occupation must end. Accountability must be served. And the internationally agreed two-state solution must become a reality. <laughs> Israel says it has to eliminate Hamas for its own safety. Footage has emerged of the latest threat to their security. This phone user started filming when hearing the sound of the Iranian-made drone overhead. The Houthis in Yemen claim responsibility for the attack, which killed one person and injured ten. In Yemen, thousands took to the streets for weekly protests over Israel's war, some celebrating a so-called joyous attack on Tel Aviv. David Garrett, TVB News. 
Just a day after becoming the Republican nominee for the U.S. presidential election, Donald Trump said he spoke to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Trump was on a high after the Republican National Convention and said he told Zelensky that he would end the war between Russia and Ukraine. Trump said he would use negotiations to bring peace to the conflict, which started in February 2022 when Russia invaded the eastern provinces of Ukraine. Zelensky expressed thanks for U.S. military assistance. Kyiv has relied on U.S. President Joe Biden for support and weapons supplies. Ukraine is wary of a possible Trump administration, with some hardline Republicans opposing the supply of money and weapons to Ukraine. In his true social post, Trump said that, as president, he will bring peace to the world and end the war that has cost so many lives. Back in Hong Kong, a second drone show featuring the popular robotic cat Doraemon took place at the Chimsha Choi Promenade tonight. Starting at 7.30, about 1,000 drones transformed into fan-favorite characters from the cartoon series. Some fans of the Japanese pop culture icon arrived as early as 11 this morning to reserve spots to watch the show. The gala also attracted mainland fans who traveled to the city just to watch the drone show. Organizers said the show lasts for around 15 minutes and included brand new content. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.